Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And of course, subject today I wanted to discuss with you guys is Nibiru uh, or the infamous Planet X, the winged planet. Well, we got all kinds of names that it's given out there. Uh, and I got some updates on it. Wanted to share that with you, but but kind of going to include a few other things uh, for some things for the first time you'll ever see. Uh, a good friend of mine out of Florida uh, texted me some images, give me permission to use those uh, with you guys. I wanted to share that with you uh, too, in light of the information I'm going to be speaking about. Now, everything I've ever been told about Planet X is that in order to see it, unless it's close enough to our sun where it can reflect the light of our sun, uh, you have to have infrared technology to be able to photograph it. And one of the latest things that was shared with me is that the planet had kind of disappeared off of radar. It's been a couple of years since we've had our last infrared uh, images of this planet. And that's because, as I've told you before, Planet X travels in the ether. It's actually going in between one dimension and another dimension back and forth. And we've talked about this for quite a couple, well, two or three years now. I've actually spoke to you about that and how that works. Um, but the concern right now, and this subject came up uh, at a meeting in Washington recently, is that because it's kind of disappeared into the ether is, could it have actually well, let me put it this way here. I wasn't told that it slipped into a wormhole, but I have been told and I have shared with you before here that there are certain uh, extraterrestrial entities that use wormholes in order to be able to travel much faster from one part of the universe to the other. For example, I shared with you on Patreon, our channel there, patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live, that wormholes are one way that one group of entities that live 10 year light years away from us can actually get here uh, pretty much in about 30 days. Uh, that's the way they travel. They hit the worm, wormholes and it's almost like it projects them forward in time or even though I know that everything I've been told, we don't necessarily know that there is time travel, that it exists, but there are some elements that suggest that it could exist. And wormholes are one of those particular uh, ideologies for that. And like, for example, if you look at the AndersonInstitute.com, they deal with time control and time travel. And specifically, I'm going to be sharing with you uh, this wormhole theory and how that works a little bit from their website. But yeah, at the same time, NASA kind of downplays that. Is warp drive real? Ever since the sound of the barrier was broken, people have turned their attention to how can we break the light speed barrier, but warp drive or any other term for faster than light travel still remains at the level of speculation. Well, the thing is, though, is, is it really that they can travel that fast or is it not that, but like a shortcut? That's what I kind of wonder myself. So since the 1930s, this is from the Anderson Institute's website, physicists have speculated about the existence of wormholes in the fabric of space. Wormholes are hypothetical areas of warped space-time with great energy that can create tunnels through the space-time. It, it uh, let me blow this up so you guys can see this a little bit better because if I'm having a hard time, you guys might be having a hard time as well. Uh, through great distances in space and also travel through time. The difficulty lies in keeping the wormhole open while the traveler makes his journey. If the opening uh, snaps shut, he will never survive to emerge at the other end. Well, from what I have been told, we know that wormholes do exist. Aliens use those or fallen angels use those for their way of traveling much faster to other parts of the universe. So if that is really true, and again, this is conjecture. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, there, the theory right now in Washington is that Planet X has been elusive for a couple of years. Could this thing end up popping out on the other side and we have little or no time for disclosure that Planet X is on top of us? Well, that brings me to the brother down in Florida. Uh, and although he gave me permission to use his photograph that he took here in Florida, we didn't discuss using his name, so I'm not going to speak about his name as of right now there. But he's got the sun setting right here. Uh, I would assume that's a, 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 a flare on the lens there, that thing that almost looks like a planet coming, right? But it's the winged uh, picture right here of this thing over here to the far left. Uh, maybe some people might think it's the moon. 
Now I've got several pictures of this. And again, I was told that we would never be able to see the planet uh, unless the sun, it was near the sun where the sun could reflect the light off of it. That appears to be what we're looking at here. And I, I and honestly, I don't know the answer to that. I, I really just don't know the answer. And the brother that sent this to me, all of the pictures are more of a wing shape. Even one picture he shows almost like a winged creature uh, going along with it. Now, I don't know the answer to that either. I don't have that up here. I would share that with you, but uh, for the sake of time, I was kind of running tight on time. Um, and so that's, that's why there's this great concern. And of course, like I said, in this meeting I was in, you know, there is a fear that this thing could pop out on the other side if it's traveling through a wormhole and Planet X will be on top of us before you know it. And their projection of 2030 being the year that they've tracked it to, to show up could be totally different makes me think of the Chilean astronomer Ferrada, uh, and let me just pull him up, uh, who actually spoke about Planet X, um, and he actually, and I may have spelt the name wrong there, but I think it is still, here we go, Chilean, Carlos Munoz Ferrada, he brought this out, and he spoke about the elliptical orbit that the planet travels in. There he is right here, Mr. Ferrada. He passed away some years ago. He's in his 90s when he passed away. An amazing man. He's one of the ones that really made me believe that this may really be true. Uh, and then, of course, I was asked by the government to contribute on the basis of uh, ancient documents. And I have done that. Uh, so I know that the government doesn't look at this as just some kind of hocus pocus nonsense. They really believe it. And here is the actual one of the videos here of Mr. Ferrada speaking about that very thing there. Actually, the entire video. Um, let's see here. He said 14 million kilometers. So here is your chart. You show us the dead star, the dead sun, this one. And he's talking about the elliptical orbit around the dead sun. Here at 92 kilometers per second. So in addition to these 92 kilometers per second, has another speed, which is more terrifying, isn't it? It has three speeds, he says. Ferrada confirms that this planet travels at three speeds, close to our sun at 76 kilometers a second. Now, the question, though, that I have when I look at this with what Mr. Ferrada said is, could these speeds be based in his projections? Could it be because it does travel in the ether? And could it be then in that case there that it manages to find a wormhole in the ether and that actually brings it up to us much faster. I don't really know the answer to that. I, I, I don't, but I'm just putting these things out there, thoughts for you guys to consider. Uh, and, you know, uh, let's just see how things go, right? One other thing I want to share with you in closing, though. Remember uh, this here, and I'll just see if we can pull up anything that actually speaks about that. China, artificial sun. And I got to thank uh, a, a good friend of mine in the Netherlands uh, for sending me the information on this as well. Um, he sent me one of the best videos I have ever seen on this. China's artificial sun burns at 70 million degrees for 20 minutes. Uh, this is what they have on there. That's actually on the sun. I don't consider the sun a reliable source of information. But China did release their, uh, but I, I will tell you this, what I just read to you now, though, uh, did come from the brother in the Netherlands that actually said that, yes, that, that information is correct. But he sent me the video, and I want to share with you this video right here. This is China launching the artificial sun. I did check in with Washington about that. They said that China has, is the most advanced country in the world on the techni technology of artificial sun. They also are one of the most advanced countries in the world on manipulating weather patterns. So just in closing, let me share that information. Let me share you this video here from my good friend, my brother there in the Netherlands. You would actually think the sun itself is rising until they zoom in and then you realize, oh no, they've launched something up into the sky. And there you go.
这个，我这个盘子，我这声音到，我我差点听到声音了，声音都能听到，哇！ Well, the Chinese are sure happy about that launch there. Anyway, I'm Steve Vanoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support of the broadcasts that we do here. Um, and we certainly appreciate your love and your support of the work we do here. Visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Uh, you can always see the videos there. You can also, uh, I think on our website too, you can get the ones that are in other languages. Uh, there is a drop-down box that gives you different things that are happening going on. Uh, and uh, I'll just see real quick here. I don't know. I know when you click Good on morning, some Fred, of these Steve videos on our Israeli website. Okay, no, it just plays on our website there. Subscribe. Oh, by the way, while you're on our YouTube channel, listen, they're up to something on YouTube, right? We have been stuck right here in subscribers for months resubscribe if you have to whatever you got to do click that notification bell and by the way you can still donate too directly through the through the uh, youtube channel as well not really sure how that works i gotta look at that one day for sure to see how that works but um but uh it'd probably be better to donate directly through our website would be the safest way at this point but anyway israeli news live here uh on our youtube channel resubscribe make sure you're subscribed on there uh, we've got to mess with YouTube because they're messing with us. I know there's too many people that subscribe on a regular basis, and they're definitely trying to keep that from happening. And I'd love to see this thing top 400,000 subscribers there. We're so close to that. And, you know, and I know it should have already topped it a long time ago. I'm Stephen Benoon. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. And God bless you and have a great day.